Good evening. Here is the world news from BGR TV, Baba Bagede Imo TV, the ninth day in the month of March 2022. I am Maureen Rebida Lawa. First are the major headlines for the world news. Why Sunday Igbo can't leave Benin Republic? Source. Forget 2023 presidency, Tinubu supporters tell or Shibado others. Court fixes March 23rd to hear MG's request to extradite Abba Kiari. Umayi appeals court order sacking him as MOU governor. An infant's mother, court overrules defendant's claim of giving confessional statement under duress. Gunmen kill Ogun, security officer. Bamishe, police initially ignored our appeal. BRT, driver's life, denied us access, family. Slain BRT victim, Bamishe, was a virgin. Mom, inconsolable, dad, had to pacify brother-in-law. And to foreign story, more than 140,000 flee Ukraine in 24 hours, says UN. And sports story, Super Eagles choose Econ Clegg for Ghana battle. Now the news and detail. Following its conditional release from detention and the circumstances surrounding its temporary relief, Yoruba Nation agitator Chief Sunday, a more popularly called Sunday Go, cannot leave Benin Republic for security reasons, branded as law. A source who spoke to Vanden in confidence said that the Yoruba activist is resting in an undisclosed residence in Cotonou, but cannot leave Benin Republic for now. The source, who was privy to Go's release, said that the activist is a political prisoner, having that there are no charges against him till now, following an investigation by the Benin's government. He said, Igbo is fine and in high spirit. He is resting in a personal residence in Kutunu. The information that he was released but cannot hold the rally is a lie. Igbo is a political prisoner, and when a political prisoner is to be released, there is always a reason why such a person is being released. And he has not done anything wrong. He is not facing any charge, either in Nigeria or Benin Republic. They only reminded him to pave way for their investigation, and they have investigated him for more than seven months and nothing was found against him. They have no reason to hold him against their laws. You can't detain anybody more than six months in Benin without charges. When asked if Igbo will be traveling out anytime soon, he said it is in his best interest to remain in Benin Republic for now because we don't trust the Nigerian government. It was uh, an internal agreement for him not to travel out. It is for security reasons. Back to Nigeria's story. A group, the disciples of Jacoban, on Wednesday asked Vice President Yemi or Shibadro, and other politicians from the Southwest Zone, not in the presidential ambition, to forget the 2023 presidency for the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Ashwaju Bola Tinumu, although the Vice President had yet to openly declare interest in con to contest the 2023 presidency, some groups have been treasurizing him to do so. However, the DOJ, a pro Tinubu group, said all politicians, particularly from the Southwest Zone, including the Vice President, must forget their presidential ambition and support the former Lagos State Governor for the 2023 presidency. A statement signed by the National Coordinator of DOJ, Abdul Akim Alawuje in Kaguna, noted that for the overall interest of Nigeria, presidential opposition should accept the superiority of Tinubu's candidacy and support him to be the next president. Allow me to say the former Lagos Elf men remained the ideal and most qualified politician in the entire country today to take over from the president, Major General Muhammad Buhari retired. With the zoning of the presidency to the southwest Nigeria, the disciples of Jacoban is once again calling all presidential hopefuls in Nigeria, particularly from the same southwest to accept the candidacy of Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinumbu, since it was above all other contestants. So the Abakiari Broha had going on still. A federal high court in Abuja fixed March 23rd to hear an application by the federal government seeking for the suspended BCP Abakiari's extradition to the United States, US. Recall that the federal government through the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, AGF, filed the application marked FHEC, bracket ABJ, bracket CS, bracket 249, bracket 2T22. The suit titled Application for the Extradition of Abakiari to the United States of America was dated and filed March 2nd. While the ATF is the applicant, Kiari is the respondent in the application. 
Kiari was formerly the head of Inspector General of Police Special Intelligence Response Team, IRT. The matter, which was assigned to Justice Ian Epo by the Chief Judge of the FHC, Justice John Soho, has been fixed for March 2024 hearing. The application was filed under the Extradition Act as part of Nigerian government's approval of the request by the U.S. for Kiari's extradition. The application, which was directly addressed to the Chief Judge in Teda, a request was made to Nigeria by diplomatic representative of the Embassy of the United States of America, USA, Abuja, for the surrender of Kiari, who is a subject in a superseding three-count indictment in case number 2.321-CR00203-RGK. The AGF of Malami said the case was filed on April 29th, 2021, in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California, USA. Malami said that Kiari was to answer to a three-count charge. The governor of Ebony State, Dave Omai, and his deputy, Dr. Eric Kelechi Igwe, on Wednesday appealed the Federal High Court judgment that sacked them from office. Omai and his deputy were on Tuesday sacked on the grounds of the defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Congress. Appealing the decision before the Court of Appeal in Abuja in suit number FHC ABJ CS 920-2021, Omai and his deputy stated that the Federal High Court aired when it said it had not seen any authority which propounds that were, were governor or deputy governor defense political party on which platform he was elected into office. It cannot be sued by the political party to reclaim its mandate. The appellant said the Honorable Trial Court was virtually setting aside the Supreme Court of Nigeria's decision in AG Federation V. Atipo Obaka and 3 ORS 2007 LCN 3799SC for the defect that there are no constitutional provisions prohibiting president or vice and invariably the governor on the deputy governor from defecting to another political party. The provisions of section 308 are specific notwithstanding anything to the contrary in this constitution was subject to subsection 2 of this section no civil or criminal proceedings shall be instituted or continued against third and fourth appellates during their mandate in office as governor and deputy governor respectively. There is no provision of the 1999 constitution as amended that provides for the removal of third and fourth appellants as sitting governor and deputy governor, respectively, of a boy state for reason of defection. A Kano State High Court, presided over by Justice Usman Nababa, as in well as the overruled claims by the prime suspect of the Malik Tanko and its accomplice, alleging that they made confessional statements under torture and duress in the criminal trial of the mother of Kanu schoolgirl. And if I will record five years old. Justin Nambaba, while giving his ruling in his trial within the trial, said the defendant made a confessional statement voluntarily without torture and duress. The judge, however, ruled that the court admitted the confessional statement as evidence and marked them as exhibits. Justice Nambaba said he overruled the claims because the defendant could not prove for that or provide the name of the officer who threatened them. The defendant, it was recalled, had at the last court sitting, denied the confessional statement dropped against them by the security officers, claiming they made a statement on the torture using electrocuted devices and the jurors were by the security officers. At the continuation of the hearing on Wednesday, the Persecution Council, led by the State Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice, Barrister Musa Lone, presented two witnesses before the court who testified and read the confessional statement by the defendant to the court and were cross examined by the Defense Council, led by the Deputy Director, Legal Aid Counsel, Barrister Mokhtar Usman Kabul, the presiding juror, Justice Nababa, however, adjourned the case till 22nd March 2022 for the continuation of the trial. Back to Southwest Nigeria. Gunmen have shot dead an operative of the Ogun State's Government Owned Security Outfit, the Associate Corps, ASC, Jimmy Ogun Jimmy. Ogun Jimmy was reportedly shot dead in the Ariki area of Shagano where he and his colleagues had visited for security surveillance. The spokesman for the Sose Corps, Maruf Yusuf, confirmed the incident to correspondent on Wednesday. Yusuf said Ogujimi was shot dead in the early hours of Wednesday at Arike, where he and five others were deployed to call the inus activities of some government terrorizing the highways in the remote area of the state. 
Yusuf said the Koro Galant officers visited Arike community in Chagamu because one of these gunmen IDOT is located in the community, which happened to be a hotel. A few minutes after the officers got to the community at about 0130 hours, a white Elox pickup with no registration number was sighted. Immediately it approached the officers, it was asked to stop, but it zoomed off. The team leader, ASC Ogutimi, together with Kazim Akodu Elewedu, trailed the vehicle, but the driver and his car felt the officers may want to pull their operation and they turned back in front of Wallex Hotel, Ariki, to open fire on our mayor. The officers were heavily sprayed with bullets from the ELOS vehicle, bullets from the gunshot left Officer Jimmy Ogutimi dead, and the gunmen escaped in their ELOX. Effort is ongoing to identify the gunmen. Yusuf hinted that the matter was reported to the Divisional Police Officer of a Oluo Division by a resident of the community who he said sent his men to visit the scene of the incident. Ogudimi, who was until his death the Ariki Post Officer, is survived by an aged parent, his wife, and a male child. He said, We pray that the good Lord will rest the soul of the deceased gallant and faithful officer of the poor. Still on Bamishe's case from Lagos, Titilayo, the elder sister of Miss Olua Bamishe Ainowola, who went missing after boarding a rapid transit bus and was later found dead at Narita Al, a divisional police officer allegedly paid less attention to the alarm raised when Bamishi was initially missing. Titilaya, who spoke on behalf of the family at a press conference, also regretted that her family members were not allowed into the premises of the BRT office at the Lipeju until they protested. The Punch had reported that Olua Bamishi, who closed from work around 7 p.m. on February 26, was on her way to visit her brother, Kwelumi, when she boarded the BRT vehicle around Chevron bus stop in the Lekki area of the States. The business, the boss man of Omini Koron Nice was said to be conveying the victim to a destination in Oshugi when Oluwa Bamiji observed that he refused to pick other passengers on the road. She finally contacted one of her colleagues at work, Felicia Omolara, to inform her about her suspicion and she was advised to disembark from the boss. Omolara, however, noted that when her friend no longer responded to her chat on WhatsApp, she called her phone number. Adding that when she picked the call, a man was heard arguing with Oluwa Bamishe, operative of the Department of State Services, later arrested Nas at his hideout in Ososa, Ogun States. With the continuation story from the slain Bamishe, concerned Nigerians have been reacting to the gruesome murder of 22 year old Oluwa Bamishe and Nola who was declared missing after boarding a Lagos bus rapid transit BRT, only for a lifeless body to be found at the morgue of the mainland hospital, Yaba, Lagos, days later. The disease of fashion designer was said to have boarded the BRT bus with number plate 240257 from Chevron, bus stop at Lekki to Oshuni, at about 7 p.m., heading to her elder brother's place at Idimu, but she never got to her destination and could not be reached on her phone until her remains were found. Flame driver of the BRT bus, Andrew Nines, was arrested in his hideout at Ososa, but was stayed by the Department of State Services, DSS. He was thereafter handed over to the police. He was arrested alongside a man that harbored him. When Vanguard Metro visited East Saleco area, opposite a Dubiri estate, where the decomposed body of Ondo Bamishi was dumped, the majority of the residents denied knowledge of the incident due to fear of the unseen aftermath. Now to foreign story. The number of refugees fleeing Ukraine increased by more than 140,000 in 24 hours, according to United Nations figures issued Wednesday, with more than 2.15 million now having fled since the Russian invaded on Friday, 24th. UNHRC, the UN's refugee agency, recorded 2 million refugees on its dedicated website, more than the previous count on Tuesday. Before the monolithic statistics are two million stories of separation, anguish and loss, UNHCR Chief Filippo Grandi said, families have been senselessly ripped apart, flung into despair and unimaginable suffering by the brutal war, he said. Authorities and the UN experts, the flow to intensify as the Russian army advances deeper into Ukraine, particularly as approaches the capital, Kiev. Before Russia invaded, more than 37 million people lived in Ukrainian territory under the control of the central government. Beside those who have left, an unknown number have been displaced from their homes within the country. 
Here is a breakdown of where refugees from Ukraine are, according to the UN Refugee Agency. Poland, Hungary, Russia, Slovakia, Romania. Romania is having some 85,444 refugees from Ukraine and now in Romania. Two camps have been set up, one in Sigeto, Nameti, and the other in Serex. And final story from the world news is a sports story. Trusts Ekron, Premier League club side, what for? At the Clare Super Eagles defender, William Trus Ekron, fit for Nigeria's double header against West African arc rivals Ghana in the World Cup playoff late March in 2022. In a short message, the Nigeria Football Federation NFF said the Super Eagles defender, William Trus Ekron, now fit and clear by what for medical team after a mild injury. Resumed full training today, now in good shape for the World Cup playoff against Ghana this month. The NFF at the 4th March released a 32-man list of players that will be looked to ahead of the two-legged cracker of Ghana with the inclusion of a defender. However, it was rumored that the World Cup player may not be ready for the important encounters after picking up an early injury. The news of his fast recovery will be sharing news to most Nigerians having seen the Super Eagles vice captain leading the team's defensive line over the qualifiers. The camp opens in Abuja on 24th March with a 24-man final list for the two leg games to be released at a later date. Nigeria will take on Ghana in the 20,000 capacity Cape Coast Stadium from 7.30 p.m. on February 25th March with the reverse leg set for the Moshul Abiola Stadium, Abuja, on Tuesday, 29th March from 6 p.m. The winner over two legs will end one of Africa's five tickets to the 22nd FIFA World Cup Finals scheduled for 14th November till 18th December this year in Qatar. That was world news from BGI TV, but before we go, a quick recap of the headlines once again. Why Sunday Igbo can't leave Benin Republic? So, we also brought to you Forget 2023 Presidency, Tinumbu supporters tell of Shimbajo orders. Court fixes March 2012 to hear evidence request to extradite Abakian. We also brought to you a breaking news. Omai appeals court order sacking him as Edwin governor. We also brought to you concerning Anifa's mother. Court overrules defendant's claim of giving confessional statement under duress. Gunmen kill Ogun security officer. Police initially ignored our appeal. BRT drivers lie, denied all access, family. Continuation of slain BRT victim, Babushe was a virgin mom inconsolable, dad had to pacify, brother-in-law. And to form his story, more than 140,000 flee Ukraine in 24 hours, says UN. And last story sports, Super Eagles choose Ekon Clef for Ghana battle. For more updates on our YouTube channel, the handle as usual is Babata Gede Imo TV. Can you subscribe? and click on the notification bell, selecting option all to access our updates. On Facebook, Bagede Imo with Alawiye Adebayo. Please like and follow the page to access our updates as well. On Instagram, Bagede Imo underscore 22. For other placement of the goods and services, coverage of events and function, both outdoors, the phone number streaming on your screen is the number to actively call for booking of other placement. Thank you for watching. I am Mo Vivi Premila Lawal. Good evening.